Good afternoon everyone, it's CM Kozeman again and today we are gonna talk about Chilisaurus, the dinosaur that could not be classified. Now this discovery is not actually very recent but I've only now gotten around to talking about it so excuse me for the delay but actually that delay has been somewhat beneficial because over the time the debate around this creature has also evolved so there's more stuff for us to go over so right now i mean i'm i'm assuming most of you know about dinosaurs but still you know when i'm podcasting i always try to make uh, make it so that someone like my aunt or uh, my mom could understand it and for some people it makes it sound a bit redundant but i'd rather be clear over redundant so here we go now dinosaurs normally are considered to be classified in two and a half big groups and i'm saying two and a half because there is three main varieties now there are the pteropods which are the meat-eating ones and these contain everything from t-rex the horned ceratosaurus allosaurus and the famous raptor dinosaurs and even the birds are parts of this pteropod group okay so that's one another group is the long-necked plant-eating dinosaurs the famous apatosaurus brontosaurus diplodocus um, brachiosaurus and uh, some of the largest land living animals ever to have lived are also classified in this group and this group is called the sauropods now i said just a while ago that dinosaurs are classified in two and a half groups because normally people assume that pteropods and sauropods were related and this was due to similarities in their bone structure the structures of their hips and feet and most importantly both of them had both groups had this system of air sacs distributed around their bodies and this made it possible for the giant plant eaters to be so large because the air sacs gave the body some sort of uh, space and weight economy and uh, the same features in birds helped them fly so there was that and now there's also the third group which is the ornithischians the bird hippid group that is actually not related to birds because this group contains all the other plant eating dinosaurs including the armored club tailed ankylosaurs the triceratops and its relatives stegosaurus you know all those bizarre plant eating things mostly with horns and spikes they go into this group and uh, they are called the bird hippid dinosaurs because this is very difficult but their hips convergently look like those of birds in order to accommodate their big guts oh by the way the duck billed dinosaurs are also in this group so you know there's an extra to add so anyways people always assume that one branch of the dinosaur family tree had the sauropods and the pteropods and the other branch was directly the one of ornithischians but then around 2017 i guess matt barron uh, a researcher from the uk with his friends came up with a new proposal and basically said that because of similarities in their earliest forms pteropods and ornithischians so t-rex and triceratops are more closely related to each other than the long-necked plant eaters and it was hailed as a big revolution in dinosaur classification so big in fact that i actually made a previous podcast about this and you can see it on the links below i used to call it a revolutionary theory of dinosaur classification or something and yes it was quite interesting for a time but not everybody adopted this scheme afterwards and you know when i look at this now eh, the biggest difficulty for me and of course i'm an armchair science enthusiast and i'm no scientist but all these family trees used in these studies they are made by computers now that's very interesting to consider when you're considering the 
state of art in dinosaur science today. What they do is they measure all the characters, the dimensions of the bones, counts of vertebra, whatever. They measure them all and encode them as characters in this great big diagram of data. So, and of course they populate this list with as many species and as many measurements as possible. So, you know, for years they go to museums, they measure all the actual fossils they could lay their hands on and create what is called a data matrix. Now, this data matrix is given to a computer which, through some computery stuff, infers the closest relationships between different forms. And this has become the accepted norm in dinosaur classification today. Uh, but sometimes people take it for granted, you know. And yes, these family trees do give us some very insightful links. I mean, for example, they connect uh, without uh, any theorizing on the scientist's behalf. They connect forms which hadn't been really considered close allies before. And, you know, they're not all wrong. But what I'm trying to say is these are ultimately family trees created by a uh, software and they should not be taken as literal evidence of lines of descent and that's what the ornithoskeleda discovery was all about they made a very detailed family tree looking at the most earliest members of all three major groups and it turned out that one group was actually closely related to the other than we thought and it was hailed as a revolution and maybe this is the case i don't know i mean it could very well be but after a few years and a more critical eye mm, i have personal doubts about it not the least because sauropods and theropods have this common system of air sacs and if theropods turned out to be closer allies of Ornithischians, then it meant it should mean that the air sacs actually evolved twice. And that seems less likely. But then again, you know, completely unrelated animals such as pterosaurs also had air sacs. So maybe it could evolve twice. And then I'm going off to a whole wild goose chase. Let chase. Let's go back to our podcast about the dinosaur that could not be classified. And this dinosaur is called Chilisaurus Diego Suarezi. Now I'm trying to, I'm going to describe it a bit, but you can also see a picture of its skeleton in the background picture. So you might as well look, but it looks like hmm, four toed, two legged, medium sized, small headed plant eater with like bizarre forward pointing teeth and its arms actually have two very chubby fingers not like that of t-rex though they look more like gnarly and m like small but still extremely muscular and in real life it should have looked like some sort of i don't know bizarre long-tailed emu look-alike with teeth i guess and i mean the arms were probably not directly visible because this animal most likely had a covering of feather-like things and stuff. But it's yeah, a bizarre beast. And it's also more interesting to note that this animal comes from the late Jurassic period. So, okay, when this was discovered in uh, 20, 2015, scientists assumed Chilisaurus was, you know, one of those weird theropod dinosaurs that had reverted to a plant-eating existence. And yes, there's a number of those. For example, the famous Terizinosaurus, the side-clawed, plant-eating, bird-like, giant things, whatever. They actually descended from meat-eating dinosaurs that had secondarily adapted a herbivorous diet and they had evolved into that weird shape. Another similar group was the ostrich dinosaurs. We know them from things like Ornithomimus, Gallimimus, famously seen in Jurassic Park, but also the extremely bizarre sail-backed giant duck, giant clawed 
Dinocherius was also a member of this group and it was an extremely large ostrich like dinosaur that had specialized for a I guess purely herbivorous existence it was like a big I mean it stood it stood I think six seven meters tall I don't know huge beast would have been very strange to see in real life but we can't so anyways i'm telling you about these freaks so that you know that meat-eating dinosaurs had gone back to plant-eating behaviors before and yeah for a while it was assumed to be a theropod this thing chilisaurus but then matt baron uh, came al around and they used this animal as ammo for their hypothesis of the ornithoskeleta or group you know and and they they claim that this is actually not a theropod it's actually a very early form of ornithischian that is to say something like the early ancestors of uh, duck billed dinosaurs and whatever that had taken a bizarre turn in itself and i mean to be honest this is a really strange animal it it, it does look like an ornithischian because its hip is basically bird shaped but i mean i guess hips are okay once upon a time people thought that dinosaur hips were for some reason like the ultimate indicator of their major group but then they discovered all these mm, plant eating theropods i told you about and all of these theropods which had uh, what was called reptile like hips had all actually reverted actually modified them in order to become more bird-like i mean i guess it's just a uh, if an animal is eating plants it hip its hips kind of swing back to give it more gut space it's as simple as this to be honest and s this way chilisaurus was similar to a theropod and one of these later ornithischians but uh, i mean Matt Barron and his friend again used a computer generated family tree to claim this discovery and they said oh yes we've been right all along Onita Skeleta exists and hallelujah Chilisaurus is the savior now aren't we so righteous or something like this but then you know you need to look at this thing one more because actually a short while later another researcher and his friends this researcher's name was Rodrigo Müller and he had a whole group of other friends whose names I don't really remember but uh, yeah all these papers are listed below by the way yeah, so if you're the more scientifically interested type go and read them so they said that uh, this previous discovery by Matt Barron proposing Chilisaurus as an Ornithoskelida messiah was faulty and actually, Chilisaurus was now one of the earliest sauropods. You know, remember the big long-necked plant eaters? Okay, so those began as somewhat lanky, big-bodied, long-necked, uh, sometimes bipedal plant-eating forms called prosauropods. And uh, things like Plateosaurus are in this group, if you know your dinosaurs. So they said it was actually a very late surviving descendant of the early long-necked sauropod plant-eating dinosaurs that hadn't lost its uh, ancestral characteristics and now lo and behold chilisaurus was a late surviving derived prosauropod so there you go i mean uh, take one more look at the skeleton of this animal because it's really extraordinary and chances are the dinosaur world in the past was populated by many bizarre groups like this we just haven't found them yet there were some others though i mean uh, i d already described you dinocherius and uh, teresinosaurus and for years these animals were assumed uh, to be a lot of other things i mean because they had big claws for example they thought dinocherius was this giant belly slashing predator for example which it wasn't and then actually teresinosaurus was once considered to be a segnosaur which was like 
a false identification they assumed it was like a beaked plant eating yet somehow webbed footed right it was uh, like a very very gravely mistaken late 1980s early 1990s misconception so you had these unclassifiable dinosaurs before what makes chilisaurus so unique is that it jumped in the three big major branches of dinosaur cladographics simultaneously and we know it from actually pretty complete rem remains so it's not like this one bizarre arm that can't be assigned a family i mean if it was a fragmented fossil like this you could say yeah i mean it could be anything but no actually we, we know the majority of the animal and it still leaves us perplexed nature it seems is full of more surprises than we can imagine and that's a good and mind invigorating and thought provoking thing i don't know guys that was it what do you think chilisaurus was please comment in the comments below and if you have any agreements or disagreements let us hear about it and also once again check below for my previous podcast on the amazing discovery of dinosaur classification by baron and his friend and also more resources okay have a nice day everybody and keep watching the skies goodbye